In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a scan tool, and this is for someone who hasn't used a scan tool very much, and we're specifically going to show some of the features that you have and some of the options that a scan tool can give you to help you diagnose um, electrical circuits in the car. So there are different types of scan tools. You, you can get a generic OBD2 scan tool, which will connect to the engine ECU on any OBD2 vehicle that's uh, 96 or newer, sold in the US. Um, and this is an enhanced scan tool made by an aftermarket company. It's a snap-on scan tool. And so it can connect to more than just the engine ECU. It can connect to uh, many of the other ECUs on the vehicle. And then also you can get a factory scan tool, which even has more capabilities. It can talk to all of the ECUs, and has all of the functions. This is a good all-around scan tool. Scan tools on any OBD2 vehicle will connect to the data link connector right here. They all have the same data link connector. Once you plug it in, this, the tool should be able to power up. And we also will need to turn the ignition key on to the position where all the dash lights will light up. That way the ECUs in the vehicle have power. And down here we'll see some options on this particular scan tool. We could choose a generic OBD2 option, but we're going to choose the scanner option right here, which will let us uh, communicate with the body control module. This is the ECU we're after today. This is a Buick, and it's a 2007 model year vehicle. We want this scan tool will let it automatically ID the vehicle. If I go to manual ID, I will have to enter the VIN in and some other things, but I, I can let the scan tool communicate with the vehicle and try to figure that out for itself. Now we have some options here. This is where we choose the ECU we want to, to communicate with. This scan tool will do a code scan of all the ECUs, checking for diagnostic trouble codes. Um, but I want to come down here and choose, I could choose the engine ECU, transmission, anti-lock brakes, airbag, and several others. The one I'm after is the body control module. You'll see it's, it also has HVAC, instrument cluster, keyless entry, and so on. But we're going to go back here and choose the body control module. This is where we could display codes. If there are any diagnostic trouble codes stored in the, the memory of the, of the ECU, we would select this. We can check for current or history codes. Current codes are those that are currently occurring, and there are none. So we'll go back and check for any history codes in this body control module. Oh, there's one right there. A B3922, which is a front wiper function select circuit. Now to diagnose that code, we want to learn more about what causes that code to set, what the criteria are, and this particular car is having problems with the turn signals. So I'm going to go back and see what we can do with the turn signals. Go back one more menu. I could clear the codes here if I had fixed the problem, but I'm not going to do that. I can do two things here. I can display the data, which would be the information from the sensors, the inputs to the computer, or and some of the outputs also could be displayed in the data. Or I can go to functional tests where I can command things on. So let's first go to data. And we could look at each of these. And that first shows us what the battery voltage at the ECU is, what the ambient light sensor is doing the temperature of the heated seats. And that's all live data. So if I was to put my hand over the light sensor here, you'd see that voltage change on the light sensor. Okay, so let's go look at inputs. Here we have a lot of options. Right at the top we have the flash to pass switch right here. And so that's the high beam flash switch. If I hold that down, you'll see that that switches states as I flash the high beams. The fog lamp switch, the hazard switch. 
You'll see there are quite a few inputs to this body control module, anything ranging from what the low beam switch, the park brake switch, the park lamp switch, right front door jar switch. Here is the left turn signal switch. So one of the things we are interested in is whether the input from the turn signal switch is getting to the body control module or not. So I'm going to reach up here and turn the left turn signal on. And we'll see that the switch does send the proper signal to the ECU. So that kind of rules out the input circuit. I can turn that off and I can turn that on and the signal is doing what it should. So now we'll go back and we can look at outputs. Basically what this will do is this will allow us to see if things are turned on. So this has backup lamps, for example. So if I put the car into reverse, the backup lamps turned on. Now that's not the input signal, but that's the actual saying the computer is commanding the backup lamps to turn on. And we could go down. Now we can come to the left rear stop and turn signal lamp because that's one that we're concerned about. We want to see if the computer will command that light to turn on. So again, I'll turn on the turn signal. The computer is commanding it on and off. You can see it switching on and off. You can also see that it's graphing that right now. Okay, so the computer is apparently doing what it should be doing. So now let's go back. There's one more thing that we can do here. That is to do bi-directional controls, which means I can control and turn on that lamp and make sure that it will light up. So I do that under functional tests on this CAN tool. Output controls. And here are the things that I can turn on. I can turn on the backup lamps right now. Driver door unlock. Let's try that just to show how this works. So I come up here to this right here where it says driver door unlock. I push on this and if I push on, I don't know if you heard that, but the driver door lock actuator just activated. This is kind of a fun section of the scan tool because there's a, there are a lot of things that you can do. You can control a lot of the outputs. I can turn on the heated seat, the fog lamps, the high beams, the horn. Let's just command the horn on here. You can see that that works. Let's come down here. Here's what we're after. The turn signal lights. Here's where we can command them on. I commanded that on. You can go see that the, the left front turn signal light did turn on. So that gives us the ability to test the output circuit and make sure that when the computer commands the turn signal light to turn on, that it actually does deliver the current to the bulb and the bulb is grounded and all of those things. And so if we do each of these tests one by one, we can narrow down the computer input, output, and even the control circuit in the computer to see if they're working. And that's kind of basically what a scan tool can do for you. It has a lot of functions and the ability to communicate with an ECU is a very powerful ability when it comes to diagnosis. I hope that this helps you understand what a scan tool can do. I hope you're able to use your scan tool to more quickly diagnose the problems that you encounter in the future.